Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. This match is going to be between Jae Hoon and Kanata. It's going to be on Guard's Garden, which has that protected secondary, and I think we're going to see some mix-up and play of this. Specifically, Protoss versus Terran and Protoss versus Zerg should be fun to watch. And I know it's the same thing as it's very similar to Loki 2, I should say, but I don't know why I have a good feeling about this map. I have a good feeling about it in the depths of my soul, much like the goodness of StarCraft or the creator of the universe. Because, you know, it's God's Garden metaphor. Maybe they're talking about the... I don't know what the metaphor is with this one. Usually they have, they'll have, like, Withering Heights, which is like, oh, that's deep. They'll have Colosseum, which I guess is an appropriate Easter map. Maybe that's a little offensive. Tau Cross would actually be a more <laughs> appropriate Easter map. But uh, God's Garden, like Garden of Eden, maybe? I don't know. Who knows what metaphor they're going for. Jehun versus Kanata after that rant. Jehun, a miserable player, actually, at least televised. I think he's something like 33% win ratio. Not that great. But he's going up against Kanata, and Kanata is one of those guys who, on paper, looks very, very good and is very strong versus Terran all the time, but is inconsistent otherwise, although he's looking very confident right here. And there shouldn't be a lot of pressure on him because SKT up 2-0, and he's not exactly playing the most ferocious PVT player in the world. But again, he plays against, he tends to play to the level of his opponents. So when he's playing a guy like Jadong, sometimes he can play fantastic, and sometimes he can take down some wins, and you're like, holy crap, Kanata's the next Bonjoa, he's going to be incredible. And then other times he'll end up playing, you know, Mi no name McGrubby, and McGrubby will end up schooling him because he just forgets how to micro somehow. He's like, what's a Marine? How do I shoot Skulk? Um... NS, re NS reference there for you guys. Natural selection if you're wondering. G4B2S.com. Special shout out to those guys. Anyway, I feel like God's Garden is just going to be one of those fun maps. I can just feel it in the core of my beam because you got that protected secondary. You have that other secondary up front. It's not really fast expansion buildable, but uh, it is. I'm not sure if it's actually Terran sealable because your ramp's kind of to the edge here. But with the siege tank, you can mostly cover that secondary, uh, and so y you know you can go for that protected, then take out two, three tanks, and get a quick, easy third. All three expansions have gas, so it's pretty macro heavy, and it's one of those things where it's just uh, it should be fun, and it's kind of a tight secondary that's or tight secondary in main that's pretty easy to hold. Maybe I feel like a lot of these maps encourage drops. And this is no exception. I do think that High Templar drops above, because right over the secondary you've got this cliff, so you can drop a High Templar up there. Maybe Size Storm, unless they're altogether prepared to have some, some... Maybe they'll float barracks up there, just to be careful, wary of such things. But I like to speculate, and I love new maps, and I, I can just feel it in my core. And I'll stop ranting about that now as we get the match underway. Lot on the line, MBC. Just, this is not the situation, again, I, this is not the situation I expected to be them in. C and Light are usually very, very strong, and actually, again, I'm glad we're out of the Winners League pro mat, those two, pro, uh, format, because both those guys, very strong players, I expected at least one of them to get a win. But yeah, now 0-2, uh, I'm forgetting who's in the fourth match, I think Jehun is going to be one of those guys who are like, okay, we're going to get one of these wins, so he's going to be one of those guys that's just going to get us something. And then I think Hewn is going into game four, he's going up against the, Zer uh, the Zerg, Battle Royal is just a Zerg versus Zerg map, it's kind of like, let's have Jadong always win game four, make sure Jadong's always going in game four to try to encourage Oz to, if that is it said it at game four, to kind of encourage Oz to send out Jadong a little earlier so it's not just, you know, automatic win going into whatever set. What is with Bunky? This weird hat. Maybe that's an Easter hat. I don't know if South Korea celebrates Easter the same time of year that everybody, well, not everybody else does. Yes, the United States. It's everyone. I'm sure, ha I'm sure all you guys are listening out there in Germany. And Special shout out back to Jamaica again. I haven't given you guys a shout out in a while, but uh, I'm sure you guys uh, out there appreciate that. And I think it's May 1st is like Walpurgis well, Night or something like that for Sweden. I was reading that randomly. I looked up Tau Cross randomly in Wikipedia just because I was interested in it. Just I got on this big long rant about Germanic Christianity and their comparisons to Valhalla and things like that. Apparently one of the big spreads for Christianity in uh, Germanic cultures is kind of the view that Jesus went to the cross like like a warrior or whatever, you kind of did it like bravely. So it's kind of like, you know, in, in Swedes you have the Valhalla culture where it's like, yeah, you know, epic death, burning, whatever, and then you die and you can go fight for either Freya or uh, Thor or whatever. And so when they're like, oh yeah, Christ like totally was like, all right, let's do the cross thing and suffer. And yeah, that, that, was, that really got the, the Vikings apparently rocked up and they're like, sweet, now we can be Christian and go pillage the countryside at the same time. I don't know. Um, but they were like all about that and then apparently... It's one of the big factors, at least in the shift swings, for the uh, spread of of uh, 
Christianity in Germany. Why I'm going on that rant in this commentary, no idea. But I think it's an interesting concept, and you learn something new every day, especially when I'm here. And it looks like we saw a 14 Nexus. Wow, four-player map, so it is a good decision. 14 Nexus, although he went for his outward expansion, I think, and I'm trying to check. Yeah, he went for the outward expansion instead of the protected expansion, which is confusing. I would have thought if you're going to go for a 14 Nexus, you might as well go for your protected secondary. So it's a little bit harder to scout um, and a little bit more... That was a great happy birthday thing right there. It might be someone's birthday. Um, maybe that's where I, I wish I had the inside Korean information like anyone does. Going to be one of those commentaries, ladies and gentlemen. Scouting right after the bat. Probe scout immediately going into the night. Looks like Kanata leaving his front door open. Looks like he's going to go for an expansion, though only a single SCV on gas. He does have that factory now producing off. And keep in mind, we did see a 14 Nexus piece who ended up losing it. He did end up coming back into this game, but we'll see if Jaehoon, with this early economic advantage, will be able to pull this out. This is what I'm talking about with Kanata. It's like he forgot how to micro an SCV here, uh, making his SCV almost look stupid. Now back to the mining gas to get that... Cyber it looks like he pulled off gas for a moment there just to get that cybernetics core a little bit faster, putting the assimilator down. Oh, maybe he just transferred probes there. <laughs> I'm completely off this commentary, but I'm just going to let it fly. Just for you guys, going to let it fly. Probe now just kind of hanging outside, trying to harass. And, ooh, that's really, really lucky. Very, very lucky on Jaehoon's part. Looks like Kanata's going to scout that upper left-hand corner first. So things going really well. He's got that second gateway coming along. Uh, only it looks like Kanata is setting up her fast expansion build. So unless, if he can get just a Dragoon Zealot out, enough to counter uh, basically that kind of all-in uh, SCV. And he's got that probe actually in position to kind of check it out as well. Um, it looks like Kanata is actually going to go for... I forgot about that. You can take the secondary first, so you can actually do that before you produce your tank. You just need that tank out in the field to kind of produce some protection. So uh, this is actually going to work out in Kanata's favor because that's going to be one less attack force. That's going to be a little less that Kanata is worried about. He's like, okay, I'm doing safe expansion build. Um, and unfortunately, he's going to end up economically behind as a result. Now he's kind of cross position. He's going to see that this Nexus was in fact built, although depending on the probe saturation, well, he, he would actually expect it to see it a little bit. Uh, just kind of warping in rather than all the way up. So he is going to know that he's going up against the 14 Nexus here. Robotics facility going up. Interesting play. Uh, let's see if he decides to go for... I expected to see... Um, not sure what I expected to see. I was maybe thinking to see Citadel rather than a robotics facility even at this stage. But it looks like it's going to be a robotics facility first. Probably get that ops out to avoid any vulture harassment. Although vultures, uh, they have a kind of a work to go through in the middle of the map. I'm kind of curious if Protoss will eventually now Kanata trying to, it looks like, wander out. Maybe to take that expansion from himself. Starport going up, maybe for a drop into that protected Nexus. Um, if if Jaehoon doesn't take it, though, it's really not going to provide all that much of an advantage. It's somehow that SCV managing to sneak through. How that SCV got all the way back there with that much health, all I, I have no idea. I didn't see it on screen. But uh, Probe Scout still oh, getting absolutely <laughs> uh, nailed. Now uh, SCV's going back to the secondary for Kanata, single vulture wandering up. Jaehoon should have plenty of troops uh, to deal with it, but um, no OBS being produced and no... No uh, robotics facility either. Weird. Um, and no range on top of it. Not quite sure what Jaehoon's up to at this stage. Kind of interesting play here from him. Although I have heard when you start playing in front of a screen, you just forget everything you know. There's that control tower to get that drop. Uh, I think optimally he's hoping that Jaehoon will go for a quick third base, which he might. He's sending that probe that direction right now. So he might be able to get some kills. There's that robotic support bay going up that Reaver will come out somewhat late and still and skipping range to do it so he can at least get something in there. Uh, so, and I like the robotics facility actually at this stage of the game. He doesn't know it. He doesn't uh, essentially know what he's going up against. And actually a pylon first rather than a nexus. Interesting. Let's see if he puts down a forge as well to just kind of go cheap with that observer. Because that amount of dragoons you can kind of protect against the front door. So I think it's a mass amount of vultures that are just planting uh, mines, but that you'd have to go kind of all in at that stage to really do it, and he isn't getting any indication of that with the amount of vultures out in the field. They're not even speed upgraded here. Academy going, because Kanata does want to see what's going on here. Um, but he doesn't have to worry about that secondary 